My family have been fishing for a thousand years in the same spot, so we go back many generations. We're a mixed fishery in Hastings and we have many, many species, but predominantly made up of three species. There's cod, place and sole. Um, I would say it's a, a sustainable fishery. Uh, it's environmentally friendly and sustainable. Uh, we had the Sea Fish Industry Authority actually looked at Hastings as a fishery and it, in the whole of the British Isles it come out as the most sustainable method of fishing that they had ever come across. In this area in the southeast of England we make up 92% of the fleet but almost no quota. And the national statistics that you have 76% of the fleet now has 2% of the quota. So obviously on that equation you, you know we either try and catch fish or go bankrupt you know we but we uh, we have lost many 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 coastal communities on the basis of allocation of quota i think it's very important we look at uh, when we look at fisheries but we take the social and economic value of the coastal communities into that thing yeah. when it when it was very straightforward we had no take zones ntz's mm -hmm. uh, and then you you had mpas marine protected area now most fishermen are agreeable protection, marine protected areas, and there are also areas which are uh, no take zones, which now are SACs, especially areas of conservation. The trouble is with changing the aquifers and changing, people don't understand what's being applied when it comes to uh, most fishermen on the ground, because they don't keep up with the legislation, they don't keep up with the work. They're suddenly told that this is going to be a special area of conservation, great, what does that mean for me as a fisherman? Sorry, no fishing, full stop. That wasn't what was agreed at the Balanced Seas. That was agreed, we don't know where, because the project sat for two years. We had uh, marine, all the marine NGOs, we had all the Greens, we had all the fishermen, and we drew up a policy that was very clear, and it actually put in place exactly what everything, what everybody wanted, and we agreed. And then we go down the road, and it's all thrown out, and they've changed. The worm specific to this area mm -hmm. in Hive Bay has grown five times better. So it's got since the last time they did. So the fishing stayed the same, but the worm has increased. Why then do you have a special area of conservation if it's achieving not the objectives? Because you either um, <laughs> you, you, you repair or you look at renewal. And, and this isn't the case. This, this was looked at as perfectly working well with the fishermen that fish there but they want to now turn it into a special area of conservation on what basis? Mm. It seems that they're automatically given credibility and where the fishing industry is always seen as the, the bad boy of the industry when in fact we've coexisted with nature for a thousand years. We fished here on good fish stocks, we've got good fish stocks now and we've coexisted by farming the seas for a thousand years. Mm. What have we done wrong? Mm. Mm. I'm really annoyed because I spent two and a half years in London, sometimes two days at the time, going thrashing these out of the meetings, making sure that conservation was looked at as well uh, and where the areas should go that are special areas of conservation or no take zones, we agreed. Bream nesting sites and such forth. There's areas which we should not fish and we all agreed on this. And there's also marine protected areas which we want to see protected and one's off Hastings here. Um, we've got the Hastings, the, the reefs and ledges, um, we put that down as a marine protected area and it, everybody agreed and it's been thrown out. So how can we have any confidence in a system that allows green NGOs to go outside of the system and saying, oh, we want that as a no, no fishing zone? When it, the social economics of that put all them fishermen out of work, basically, and, for no reason. Also, it's no good telling us that it, we're going to benefit in the long run because we're... we're no matter how much fish you got in that sea, I'm not allowed to catch it because lack of quota. Nothing to do with the state of the fish stocks. The fish stocks can be the healthiest they've been for generations. It doesn't mean that the small fishing boat can fish. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. So to say we're all going to do better off. And a prime example is where they've just looked at down the southwest. If you, if you say, right, this is going to become a, a, a new area and it's, it's now heavily predated with big lobsters, great. But the velvet crabs are gone. You've upset the balance. Where you fished on lobster, you created a balance. You let the lobster predate on the other fish and you've let uh, one species take hold, which is out of context. 
So you've got tons, they say, we've got tons of big lobsters there now, but all your my velvet crabs are gone. <laughs> yeah. They've been destroyed. So you've, you've got, we've worked in, we've balanced with nature for many, many generations. A thousand years this, uh, my family's been fishing here. And to tell us that um, we don't know about conservation is annoying because conservation is in our mind all the time. That's why we use large mesh nets. That's why we, we were fishing a way that is sustainable and we were fishing and allow all the juveniles to breed once or twice before they're caught. We know what sustainability is, but it's a pity they don't listen a little bit more to us. It was ecology versus the rest. All the rest, yeah. At different times, different locations, uh, when it affected them, then obviously uh, people piped up. You know, if it's a shipping matter, then the shipping guys were, uh, hang on, this will affect us, you know, of its dredgers, oh, it's going to affect us. Um, if it's fishing, it will affect us. Uh, and the ecology people were very much driving the, the, uh, the targets, right. yeah? yeah, the percentages they wanted to achieve. Yeah. So they were sitting there, some of them not saying a word most of the time, just sitting there, because it was going in the travel, direction of travel they wanted. But that's the way the thing was set up. It was set up from day one like that, so you knew what you're into. Um, you try to mitigate your sector that had less impact on your sector than something else. Human nature, you know, it's mitigation. But at the end of the day, um, it was still going to end up being where it's going to end up, because it's driven by the, by, the, by the actual information and evidence we were given.